on it's recording uh there are just some folks who folks excuse me who uh who can't join us and so we're gonna um set the recording but uh why don't i just quickly introduce myself um my name is josh hadro i'm the managing director of the IIIF consortium um which is a uh, a set of three employees who do the work of supporting the IIIF community and institutions and um, and folks like Ed uh, and Nemesine and all the different pieces of the IIIF community that put together software that work with collections and, and do all the amazing things that uh, that kind of keep the IIIF community really vibrant. Um, so uh, I just want to welcome you all today. Thank you for your interest. Um, and uh, and you know really briefly introduce um, Ed, who can introduce himself at more length. But um, I'll just say you know you're here to um, I think learn more about the exhibit.so platform and and tool. And um, if you haven't already worked with it, um, you're in for a treat. Uh, it's you know it's relatively new. I don't remember exactly when you debuted it um, with St Andrews, but I'll say just in the probably you know year and a half or two years that it's been around, the AAA community has really found a lot of um, use for it. And uh, just for our own part at the AAA Consortium, um, it's been really valuable in terms of the training that we do um, and demonstrating kind of the interoperability and the ways of Sorry, my cat wanted to chime in too. Um, the ways that uh, you know that it's it's it triple F makes it easy to use collections across institutions and and do presentations and and all of this great stuff. So um, rather than say more, I'll let you hear from Ed, uh, who obviously knows a lot more and can give you a lot more a um, lot more great detail. But uh, but thanks for joining. Um, thanks, Ed, for uh, for putting this workshop together. Um, and uh, I won't be able to say for the whole thing, but just let me know if you have any questions and uh, enjoy. Great. Thanks, Josh. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming along. Uh, for the, the format of this, I thought the best way to do it was to kind of run it like a kind of a triple AF call, like a regular one where we have a kind of a Google Doc with an agenda in it. And then I share my screen and I'll just live demo uh, everything and then um we can kind of take notes as we go um so if i just share my screen um so you should see my google doc here i'll put a link to this in the chat um so if you'd like to add your name to the list here, please do. And then uh, obviously every, everyone will have a, a link to this um, when the workshop finishes. And then uh, we'll, we'll have a kind of a notes section at the bottom uh, that you can use for reference. Um, Sophie, my partner Sophie is also on the call. She's gonna be monitoring the chat. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat. And then uh, Sophie will let me know, and then uh, you know I, I can try and address them as we go. Um, and Sophie's also going to be taking notes. Um, so yeah, uh, please please add any questions you have to the chat. Um, right. So Josh has already done a bit of an introduction. Um, probably makes sense not to, not to do a whole, you know, save time, I guess, rather than everyone introduce themselves. Um, perhaps it makes more sense to just jump straight in. Uh, so um, I'm Ed Silverton. Uh, I work on the Universal Viewer project. Um, so this is, this is Universal Viewer. Uh, it's kind of a triple F viewer, been around for quite a long time now. Um, and it's used by Exhibit. So Exhibit is a kind of a tool that builds on uh, Universal Viewer and uses it. Um, this is Sophie and my uh, website, nemesine.io. And we do all kinds of different things. Um, we work with libraries and museums. And uh, I guess, broadly speaking, we, we help people who've got a digital collection online to kind of tell stories and build engaging things with those digital collections. 
So Exhibit is kind of our most recent, one of our most recent projects. Um, well, it, it was in 2020, but so more recently added to our website, let me say. Um, so uh, Grace is another project we worked on, which is a kind of immersive kind of film, um, multi-screen film for the Grace Darling Museum. Um, we've done all kinds of different things, AR, magazines, 3D models for the Science Museum, stuff like that. Um, so I guess that's enough about me. Uh, so what is Exhibit? Um, this is Exhibit, <laughs> exhibit.so. Um, it's, it's a, well, it says here, promote engagement and learning with your online digital collections. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of a storytelling tool for using your IIIF collections and, and uh, to create stories. So these can be slideshows, scrolly telling stories, kiosks, and uh, now quizzes as well. Uh, I'm going to be covering all of those um, aspects of the tool. Uh, it started off in 2020, uh, around about this, the, it was kind of triggered by, if you like, the, the, um, the, the COVID, uh, the, lo the lockdown, of the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, so students at the University of St. Andrews were working from home. And St. Andrews had recently started a, a large kind of 3D digitization project. And they wanted, uh, as part of, you know, with their museum, and uh, they wanted their students to be able to use those 3D objects, which were being made available from the catalog uh, in IIIF format. So oh, I've got a bit of a, a bit of sound. Um, so that they commissioned us to build a storytelling tool for them, which is what you know where exhibit came from and their students are, are using it uh, to create stories um, that kind of demonstrate they understand a certain subject and share them with their you know the lecturer via kind of Moodle so embedding it in a, in a Moodle project and since then we've, we've also it's been adopted by the British Library um, uh, as part of the Heritage Made Digital Project and uh, Royal Pavilion Museums in, in Brighton, where, I'm, where I live, uh, they, they've, they've also adopted it. Um, so we've got a kind of a website with some examples here you can click on to sort of see how it works, sort of pick some favourites we've picked out. Um, this, is, this is a scrolly telling one about Jane Austen, uh, combines images with 3D models, eventually there's a, there's a writing desk, uh, it'll load up, it's digitized for the British Library. So this is a, quite a nice example, I think, of how it works in scrolly tank mode, but there's various other examples. Um, and yeah, you can click, create an exhibit from here and have it hosted on exhibit there. So, uh, and I'll get, I'll get onto that. So, so how does exhibit use triple IF? Um, we have our kind of docs section of our site. So if you go to exhibit.so and then click on docs, we have this kind of fairly comprehensive kind of documentation. And there's a section here on, on triple IF and it kind of gives you an introduction, a brief introduction to kind of what triple IF is and how Exhibit uses it. Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of assuming everyone here has a basic idea of what triple IF is for. Um, so uh, if, if you want to, I guess, um, please go here and you know, read this documentation. And this actually links out to the official IIIF sort of website as well, where you can find out everything you want to know. Um, but in essence, uh, as I mentioned, it's using the Universal Viewer 
um, which is a AAAF viewer. Uh, and to, to load up AAAF content, and uh, you, you are able to kind of import AAAF manifests into the tool and visualize them in your stories via the Universal Viewer. So it's kind of like a, a wrapper for the Universal Viewer, if you like. Um, and there's some, some links here to some examples of what a AAAF manifest looks like. And there's, there's some you know, examples here of what if I want to create my own AAAF as opposed to use AAAF from third parties. So there's some kind of guidance there on how to do that. So um, how has it developed? This is also in our, in our docs. Um, we have, a, have an FAQ which we're always trying to add to. I mean, this is kind of the, also the goal of the notes section of this uh, workshop. If we can gather some great questions in there, we can ex keep expanding on this FAQ. Um, but yeah, we've got a, one here. What is the tech stack of Exhibit? So Next.js front end hosted on Vercel. Um, Next.js is kind of a React meta framework. It uses Tailwind CSS, which is a, um, you know, atomic CSS library, um, Universal Viewer, and it uses Firebase for the back end, so for the, the database and cloud functions. So this is a kind of a Google product. It's very, he very heavily oriented around kind of the Google Cloud stack. Um, so yeah, we're using a few Google services. Um, yeah, and there's, a, there's a various other questions in here that we've that have come in um, occasionally. Um, so, you know, how to how to host your exhibits on WordPress blogs? Um, can our developer internally upgrade it? Uh, all of that kind of stuff. Is it future proof? <laughs> we hope so. Um, you know, all of that. Um, yeah, and I've already kind of covered who's using exhibit. Um, since the conference, I've had several other <laughs> inquiries about, about people wanting to kind of get it set up at their institution. So it's a growing list, um, you know, quite exciting time for the project. Um, so yeah, it's, it seems to be growing apace. Um, and lots of great use cases are, are coming in all the time of new features. For example, I've just, just added deep linking um, for a client who really wanted that. So they wanted to be able to, uh, I can give you a quick look at that. Uh, this is our, one of our demo exhibits. If I refresh this. Uh, and then click through and see it's updating the, the screen there. This is a new feature. So if you want, you can send someone that URL and link directly to a particular slide. And also you can link to them within your descriptions. So you can kind of almost build these branching narratives, which is exactly what the client are intending to do. Um, right, so that, that's the introduction. Uh, so now is the demo. Um, so there are two sort of ways to use Exhibit. There's Exhibit.so, which is a kind of hosted version um, where you know you can kind of, or managed, should I say, uh, where you can kind of come along and click create an exhibit. And you, you're taken to this uh, form where you choose which type of exhibit you want to create. It defaults to slides. Um, but there's you know three other types and we'll, we'll get into those. Uh, anyone anyone's free to just kind of create an exhibit here. Um, you know it's kind of free text entry. Uh, it has to have a title and author and a description. You can also specify rights and it's just sort of free text entry. You can probably use something like CC by or you know um, whatever whatever makes sense, often it's just left blank. Um, 
we'll get into the to these later on and these options. And you have to go through the kind of a capture and uh, you know confirm that you've read the some service privacy policy. Uh, as you know, these are kind of requirements of these days with these sorts of websites. If you're storing any uh, any kind of data or you know providing any kind of online service, uh, we don't actually have user accounts uh, at this time. Uh, it's more like a kind of, and this was a feature uh, that St Andrews um, required um, for their students. They they didn't want user accounts. They didn't want anything to be stored. Uh, although I can kind of tell everyone now that that's coming, that that's, in, that's going to be arriving in the next few months. Um, but we're not going to, at the, at the same time, we're not going to lose this feature where you can, you know, send someone an edit URL and then they've also got access to your, it's like a, kind of like a Google Doc kind of approach where you can just send someone an edit link. So yeah, user accounts are coming, but we're not going to lose this way of doing things either. Um, and I'll cover sharing and all that in more detail. So yeah, you, you can you can come to the site and uh, you can create a, um, an exhibit this way. You can kind of import your IIIF. This is just remembering previous ones that I've that I've put in. Uh, if you're able to find a IIIF manifest URL, then uh, you know the it varies how these things are shared online. Each catalog has a different way of doing it. But um, if you're if you're if you know the URL for your triple F manifest, you can you can add it and then add it to exhibit, and you can start you know telling stories with it with zoom zoom and describe function function. Um, what I'm going to do though is take a kind of a different uh, kind of approach to this, where I'm going to start with um, I'm going to create a full exhibit, but I'm going to use um, a manifest that's on St Andrew's website, so I can show you the whole add to exhibit button kind of path uh, that St Andrew's use, and that will that will help us demonstrate all the other features. But you you can use exhibit.so directly, um, or you can self-host. So this is an example of a recent uh, project for Bruges uh, Public Library, where they wanted to host their own version of exhibit. Um, what you end up, what you get is uh, something like this. We're using the cell for the kind of hosting of the front end of the, of the application. Um, you can create a kind of a project on the cell and give it a name like like this. The project was called Monk, um, and that's fine for them. They're happy with, with that setup because they their installation of exhibit doesn't need to be public facing. They're just using it themselves to create exhibits and then embed those in their WordPress blog that they've got set up. Um, but it is possible to uh, you know make this. URL essentially anything you want. You know, you can you can change the, the DNS on your main website to say like exhibits.mywebsite.com and uh, host it at an address like that. Um, so yeah, uh, Bruges, Bruges went went with this route, um, where they kind of host their own version, and it works exactly like the main exhibit.so website. It's, it's identical essentially, except. Um, you know, you get a simplified front end and you, you click here to create an exhibit instead of scrolling down through all the kind of uh, other stuff on the home on the home page. Um, also, um, one thing that Bruges commissioned is uh, YouTube support, um, which is currently only for people that install their own instance. It's kind of behind a config option. Um, and probably going to probably will stay that way. There'll be, there'll be features that are available to everyone on exhibit.so, and then there's kind of other things like maybe like YouTube support and user accounts and things like that that are kind of only if you've got your own instance. Um, otherwise, you know, exhibit.so might get a bit 
know, like grow, grow too rapidly or you know, that sort of thing. Um, so benefits of self-hosting, you, you get your own custom domain, um, as, I, as I kind of outlined. Um, YouTube support, uh, so yeah, this, I've got a demo here of, of YouTube. So this is our kind of test exhibit about um, Dionysus. And here we can see you know, this first sort of step in the story is a, is a YouTube video. This is one of the Ashmolean's um, YouTube videos. Um, they, what, what, you'll notice that when, when you pause the video, it only shows there's a kind of a configuration where it only shows other related, you have to show related YouTube videos. There's no way of turning it off, but you can limit it. So it only shows related videos from the same channel. So these are other kind of Ashmolean videos that it shows here. Um, and the way that this works is uh, we're looking at a slideshow at the moment. You can see there's a little slides thing here. If we wanted, we could go in here and change this to a different format. Um, YouTube works in all of them. Changing these, this format is non-destructive. So you, you're not, you're not going to lose anything when you change between formats. Everything's preserved. So you could start off with a slideshow and change it into a kiosk and then change it into a quiz and then change it back to a slideshow, ad infinitum. Um, so course it's a, um, a YouTube video where we're able to specify the kind of duration of the of the video so when it starts and when it ends um, and I'll get I'll get into these options a bit more later I, but um, this, is, this is what an image looks like if, if we go to the, our add items dialog you can see that here are all the items used in this exhibit um, and then you have a kind of a little icon next to them, uh, whether it's show whether it's IIIF or, or a YouTube video. And there's, quite, there's a handy little button here that you can click to kind of copy the URL and then go and view it. Um, yeah, and it's just it's the same as importing a IIIF manifest. You, you go to YouTube. Um, you find your, the video that you're interested in. In this case, let's try and find another one. Uh, use, use one of theirs. So if we copy this URL, go to add item. Paste it in there, import it, add that to exhibit. There's, there's our video. And then I can start writing my comments here and set, you know, defaults to the whole duration of the video. You have to kind of find the part of the video that you're interested in. Is it in Paris or is it telecommunication? You know, five, five minutes to. Yeah, you can fine tune this as well using these little, little arrows. And then hit OK. And you can reorder these as well. So put this at the start. And if you click preview, that shows you your, your exhibit, what it looks like. And when it, if you have a YouTube video at the start, it defaults to not the video, but a, a kind of a thumbnail that it downloads from. From a, it's kind of a poster image that it downloads from YouTube. So there's your video section. And if you click, keep clicking, it'll go on to the next one. Um, so it's kind of a quick demo of YouTube. Um, another benefit you get is personalized analytics. So if if you're setting up your own Firebase account to, to host the exhibit, Firebase is owned by Google, um, kind of a 
Google products. It's kind of, it's kind of think of it as a kind of a almost a kind of a collection of Google Cloud. It's kind of built on Google Cloud, I guess. It's a Google Cloud collection of services that like makes it makes it easier to kind of administrate them. Um, but you, you get your own um, you get your own uh, sort of analytics dashboard. Um, so you know Google Analytics is really sort of integrated into this, so you can see exactly how people are using your exhibits uh, and the kind of retention and bounce rate and all, all the stuff you'd expect from from uh, Google Analytics. Um, quite excited to build out more services around Google Cloud for for exhibit. There's various ideas coming in for. Things people would like to see. Um, so, duplication. Um, let's just demonstrate that quickly. If we go to exhibit.so and open the Jane Austen exhibit again, you can see that you've got this duplicate button and also duplicated from. So, earlier on, um, when I created uh, Created an exhibit. There is this allow duplication option. So if you've got that checked, then when you publish your exhibit, you get a, a, a duplicate button. And you can also, it'll also show a duplicated from button if it's, you know, it's almost like Git, like GitHub. You can sort of see, follow the trail back. To the original uh, exhibit. <clears throat> um, so if you click duplicate, it sends you to you know four slash exhibits four slash create, and it passes in the ID of the of the exhibit that you want to duplicate, and then uh, you can put in a new author and change the title and description as you like, and uh, you could even turn off duplication if you want. Um, Click these and then let's let's make this a, a quiz instead. Quiz about Jane Austen. Oh. So when you when you complete the quiz, you need to have a, a message to say you've you've successfully completed the quiz. So this is now a quiz about Jane Austen that we've duplicated from, from the other one. Currently there are no questions uh, for this, but we're gonna get onto that um, in another example. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's duplication. Uh, I could show you, I don't know if I've still got it open, but yeah, you, you can follow the, the, the duplicate from chain back to the original one, if you like, just by clicking on those links. So add to exhibit button. This is mentioned in the docs as well. Um, so add to exhibit button. So this is how uh, St. Andrews you know, are using this. They, they specifically requested this. So it's, uh, they've got their online catalog. Uh, and they're using the Universal Viewer, but they don't, you don't have to use the, the Universal Viewer. Uh, as long as you've got, you know, a triple F manifest available uh, for whatever record you're looking at, you can quite easily create a add to exhibit button. Here's a kind of a sort of simple example of that, where um, like there's some there's some kind of SVG buttons you can use as well if you like. Um, but yeah. Uh, St. Andrews use this kind of use this record approach. But essentially it's a link to exhibit.so or it could be your instance. Um, you know, it could be whatever you like. Uh, and it passes in the triple F manifest URL. So it's very similar to how the duplication works. It's basically just passing in a manifest URL uh, and then creating something from that. Um, and, and it's this URL, it can be a regular any kind of triple life manifest or it can be a collection triple life collection 
So when you pass a collection in, it, um, it automatically adds all of the sub manifests in that collection to your exhibit. And this is particularly um, attractive for, for St. Andrews because they've got a add to selection button. So as you, as you navigate their collection online, you can create your own collection of things you're interested in. And then you can add that collection to exhibit. So it's kind of a nice way to find a bunch of things that you like and then create an exhibit from it. Um, so I'm going to demo doing that. So we're going to use this uh, one of the items in the in the demo exhibit about Dionysus. So this is a, a manuscript. Um, click on add to exhibit. It's going to give you a preview in the universal viewer of this object, and you can kind of you know have a look through it. Just make sure it's what you want. Um, and what I'm going to do is kind of recreate that Dionysus exhibit as, as we go. So I'm going to use a slides template. Um, Dionysus, it's all the time. Create. So that's now an imported this manuscript. Let's, uh, let's add a comment here. We can hit preview. And load that up. Dionysus, an exhibit about Dionysus, author of Silverton. No, I didn't put any uh, license in, but it would have appeared there. Next, and it's going to zoom in on Taylor Model Bacchus, the, the part I just didn't do on here. So, this is the kind of the zoom and zoom and describe uh, mechanic, if you like. Um, so, we've already kind of covered the settings a bit. Um, let, let's let's actually add some rights to that just so you can see how it looks. There you go. It just gets added in brackets. Um, now let's have a look at the password protection. So. I can type in any kind of password I want here. It's, it's kind of identical to how Vimeo works. It's basically the same user experience. So if I just say password, <laughs> I don't recommend using password for anything you like in there. And update that. Now if I open a, if I copy this URL and I open a new incognito window so that uh, automatically, I, I don't have to enter the password because it's my, you know, any, uh, my exhibit. I, I created the, the, you know, it's, I've already got the cookie uh, because I added the password. But for someone who hasn't got the, the cookie, they, you know, they'll you send them that link and then they'll get a, get this message and you've got to type in the right password and they can see it. Um, so we've done zoom describe settings. So let's add another manifest here. Um, this is uh, this is the painting Bacchus and Ariadne of the National Gallery in the UK. Um, Bacchus and Ariadne, add to exhibit. So we can zoom in on, on this. Add our comment. It's worth noting that there's various kind of formatting options here that you can use. All of these uh, 
functional. So you can actually create a, a numbered list or a bullet point list and color the text. Uh, you can add links as well, as I mentioned earlier. So if you wanted to, you could Actually, interesting. <laughs> um, you know, put, put in a, anything you want in there, and that will appear as a clickable link in your description. Um, yeah, not the neatest. <laughs> Um, there you go. Uh, you can also change the background color of your description box. So if you wanted to make this a kind of a nice blue to kind of mimic the prevailing color, I guess, of that, and then you want to kind of make this bold and red. <laughs> Uh, do that. So you can see that the background's blue, but it's not actually come out as red. Interestingly, maybe that's a bug. Hmm. Yeah, I think I must have uh, broken that recently. Oh well. Um, <laughs> one for the list. Um, I should check what's going on in the chat. Can you create story content in non Latin script languages? Um, I believe so. Um, is there some? Could you give me some text to test with, maybe, and uh, we can we can try it out. Um, but it should just work with any um, any UTF eight kind of text. We're not kind of doing anything special there. Uh, but yeah, if you if you want to give me some text to test with, then you can give it a go. Um, So we've added that. Uh, let's add a 3D manifest. So this is a this is a amphora. So let's add that. So um, you know, triple I 3D is is not yet officially a thing, uh, although. You know, there is a technical specific specification group that I'm co-chair of that we're kind of working towards trying to, you know, figure that trying to figure this out. You know, could could uh, could the kind of triple IF concepts be applied to 3D models? Um, essentially, what we're doing here with with this uh, is it's a GLB file, um, and we're, we're essentially painting that. There's your GLB, um, we're, we're painting that onto a canvas. And the universal viewer you know, knows how to deal with that. It's, it's not non-standard at the moment, but as I say, there's a technical specification group try, you know, working towards, towards that. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's very similar to an image. You can kind of um, select something you're interested in uh, and add a, Add a comment. Um, and then if we refresh our exhibit, it's worth noting as well that uh, one thing that um, St. Andrew's asked for is preloading. So as, as we go, things are being preloaded in the background. So the, the 3D model, when we get to it, um, should load, there you go, quite quickly because it's already in memory. 
uh, so we can kind of, you know, tell, tell a story. Heracles. I oh know it's probably, you can spell it with a K. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, as we, as we click next, it will then rotate the, the model and zoom it to that, to that point of interest. And uh, you get the attribution as well, because the because using the universal viewer, the, it's kind of good, kind of uh, good practice to kind of make the to attribute the, the artwork or uh, object to the sort of holding institution. Um, so yeah, that that will appear. Uh, so we've done actually quite a lot of previewing already, and I've already demoed the changing of the background color. Um, so we've got about, yeah, we need to probably, probably need to pick up pace a little bit. Um, so let's look at the different types of templates. So we got this, just convert this to a kiosk. Um, so as was shown before, you click on this box up here, this will take you to the settings. Change that to a kiosk. Um, let's turn off password protection. We don't need that anymore. Update. And then hit refresh. So what's going to happen now is that this is kind of like the slideshow um, template, except you get a play button. If you press play, you've, you've got a kind of a predefined kind of default, I think it's 10 seconds per slide. And it'll just, you know, gradually, it'll just loop through um, each slide automatically. And uh, this is requested uh, by St. Andrews um, because they have their museum and they want to be able to show their exhibits in situ in, in their museum. Um, so I have an example of that. I have a, let's just let this go, and it will it will loop back to the back to the start again. So you you can just let leave this running on a screen in a museum ad infinitum. Um, so I believe I had Figma open. Probably, yeah. Um, so I just had a couple of pictures of, you know, this is what, what it looks like in their, in their museum. They also have, um, I've been using QR codes to link to link to their exhibits. Let me see that. Uh, but that's also a very nice you know, option, I think. So, you know, you've, you've got your kind of, you know, your display item there, and then you can kind of hold your phone up to that and see a story a story about it. Um, while we're here, the, the Booth Museum in, in Brighton, part of Royal Pavilion, they've done some really clever stuff with quizzes uh, where they, and we'll get onto quizzes more, more but they've, they've done a prize draw where if you complete the, the quiz, you uh, get a kind of a free tour of the museum. Um, and also the British Library have been doing interesting stuff with, with Exhibit where they challenge the public to, to create exhibits using their online collections. And then they'd then you know, tweet, tweet them at us and then we'll retweet them and, and stuff like that. So there's various cool ways you can kind of, you know, build engagement through using this tool. Um, so yeah, I've converted to a kiosk. So let's show you the um, durations. So as I said, it defaults to 10 seconds. Uh, these, these tabs here, these, these are kind of contextual um, based on what kind of template you're using. So if it's a kiosk, you get a, a duration tab um, because yeah, it, it, it makes sense in this context. So I can change that to five and it'll be shorter, uh, but you've still got the background color. So you can change the background from blue to you know, whatever. 
Um, and we yeah, we've covered what Sanders is doing. Uh, so scrolling telling. If I click on, if I now go to settings, click on scroll. And then refresh my exhibit. Changes format so that it's no longer a slideshow with a kind of an overlay up here. You get a kind of a side panel uh, and you can scroll through instead. Um, they call this scrolly telling, uh, um, kind of a popular term for it. Um, so yeah, I actually heard the other day, uh, someone told me they've used um, the slide presentation mode in an actual presentation, like, you know, like a, instead of PowerPoint, which is really interesting. Uh, I think next time I do a talk about exhibit, I'll probably don't want to you know, over promise here, but <laughs> maybe it'd be cool to do it in exhibit, an exhibit about exhibit. Um, but this works really nicely on all, all, the, all of these templates work uh, on, on mobile as well. Let's refresh it. So it looks slightly different on, on mobile. Um, you know, it's this kind of kind of thing where the, the instead of you lose the sort of white side panel and they're, they're overlaid like this. And that works on an iPad and all all mobile devices. Um, right, so that changes to a quiz. So this is a more recent addition. So you notice the add answer appeared uh, and we've got, you know, duration's gone and we've got this pinpoints tab instead. So I've kind of prepared some already. So for back of scenario admin, here's the, here's the question we want to ask. So, Delete that. So Bacchus throws Ariadne's crown into the air. So this is what we're talking about is this. Constellation represents of the stars above her head. What's the name of the constellation? Cassiopeia, Corona Borealis, or Orion. So if we click add answer, we can start putting in our answers in here. And then we can we can reorder these um, or delete them. Um, and we want to select which one is the correct answer. So we click the checkbox for that for that answer. Um, and then let's click OK on that and then refresh. So the quiz looks just like the slide presentation, except, uh, and it basically, it's basically the same as the slide presentation, except you, you have this option to add answers in. And not every slide has to have a question and, and answers. You, know, you can mix them up. Um, but and everyone that does have a question, if I click next without selecting an answer, it's gonna say, sorry, that's, please try again. Um, so if I select the wrong answer, incorrect, please try again. And if I select the right answer, these could be multiple choice as well. So um, this, because there's only one correct answer, we get a radio button list. But if if I were to say that the you know, multiple uh, multiple of these were the correct answer, by clicking another one, you you get a checkbox list instead of a instead of a radio button list. So that's correct. All right. Proceed to the next slide. Um, so let's ask a question about the M4.
So which of these people depicted as Dionysus? So one, two, or three. So it's saying that one is the correct answer. So in the in the pinpoints tab here, you can select this. It says double click on the item to create a pinpoint. So if you double click, it's going to add a pinpoint to where we double click. We can add a couple more here. You can see that these are added to our pinpoints. Um, we can, these are reusable as well. You have a library of kind of pinpoints as you create them, so you can reuse them across different uh, story points, story steps. Um, so, you know, if I were to create another story step, all, th all three of these would be listed in, in available. You can see that they disappear as I take them off. And then, uh, you know, you can add them like this as well. Um, and you can also uh, give them, so number two is, is uh, who that is, <laughs> uh, but I know number one is Dionysus. These can be changed in uh, uh, you know, that measure. Um, so if I now add my answers in here, one, two, or three, and set one as a correct answer. So kind of Borealis. So which of the people depicted is Dionysus? And interesting thing about this is that you can also click on, on the pinpoints to select the answer, which it feels more natural a lot of the time than selecting them manually here. So we know that that's Dionysus. If I keep clicking, you get congratulations, you've completed the quiz. And I can have a ticker tape parade if you like um, and then you can kind of restart and as I showed with um, Royal Pavilion you know they, they have a link at the end of their quiz which is like a, a call to action you know now we'll go here and you know register for our free tour or that, that kind of thing um, once we have user accounts um, later this year we'll be able to do more interesting stuff probably with quizzes such as you know capture who who has passed the quiz or who hasn't and that kind of thing. Um, for, for St. Andrews, they're, they're happy with the kind of current setup where they can just create a quiz and uh, send it, give it to their students and then just take their word for it that they <laughs> completed it. Um, the other thing about duplication that I didn't mention actually, the duplicate button. Um, the, the, the kind of lecturers at Univers uh, University of St. Andrews they kind of don't expect their students to trawl through their whole the whole catalog and create exhibits that way. What they tend to do often is create their own, you know, the lecturer would create their exhibit, pre-fill it with all the objects of interest, and then send a link like this to their students and say, right, just duplicate that and, and then write commentary on it. So they don't have to kind of go and find everything in the, in the catalog. Um, so it's kind of a nice way to kind of get people going, started with something. Um, right, so we've, done, we've actually demoed password protection. I'm kind of uh, mixing this up a bit. Um, so save, share, and embed your exhibit. Uh, so we're not doing badly for time, actually. Um, let's show you what um, Raw Pavilion have been doing. Um, there's a... There's an issue at the moment with their blog, uh, way the frames are styled on their blog. They're, they're really small. <laughs> I've, I've told them how to fix it. But uh, at some point, <laughs> these will be a bit bigger. 
Um, but yeah, full screen works. So, so they they it's quite dark, but they they've they've digitized um, some Chinese wallpaper at uh, the Royal Pavilion, and they've created these awesome uh, stories where you can kind of click through and learn more about the kind of minute details. This is one of my, one of my favorites. Um, so yeah, and this is a kind of a WordPress blog where they've they've embedded that, and then they've kind of you know gone on embedded more exhibits and sections of, of images and things like that. Um, so oh, I've already mentioned that the embedding Moodle. Um, so I was going to demo how to kind of share and embed your exhibits. So if we go back to our Dionysus example, I'll click on share. Um, you've got two options here, um, an edit link, or you can change that to a view link. So a view link is kind of what we've been looking at already. I mean, we've been looking at both of these. This is what a view link is. It's, it's the exhibit itself that you've that you're creating, um, the kind of published version of it, if you like. Uh, an edit link, if I copy that, that's the actual authoring interface. And um, you know, much like a Google Doc, you can share this with people and trust them that then you know they're not gonna mess it up or whatever. <laughs> but it means you can kind of collaborate on on, on exhibits this way. Um, but you also have this option um, to embed it in an iframe. And this is what uh, Royal Pavilion were doing on their, on their blog. So this will generate an iframe code for you. And then if I go to um, glitch.com, glitch.com is kind of a quick way to, oops, a quick way to uh, create simple web pages. Um, demo things. Here's glitch has a glitch. <laughs> um, so you can sign in with your GitHub account or any of those. Uh, and eventually it'll give me some options, I hope. Guess not. Uh, okay. Pound for maintenance or something at the moment. Um, suffice to say, I'll just show you a notepad. This is your iframe that you get. Um, the source is your exhibit. Uh, the width and height. Um, these are essential for in order for kiosks to work. You need auto play enabled. You need full screen enabled if you want to be able to full screen it. And that's it. Uh, and you can drop that into your um, website. Um, there is, I think, in our notes. There's a section here on save, share, and embed. Um, goes with a little bit more detail as an example of an embedded exhibit, but it also tells you how to use it with WordPress. So WordPress is a bit finicky about iframes. Um, it's disallowed by default. So you need to install the iframe plugin for WordPress. And then you need to convert your iframe to this format. Use this kind of square brackets. For, uh, format and then uh, that will work in WordPress. Um, and uh, one thing we're talking about to King's Digital Lab about, they, they were interested in trying out Exhibit, but they wanted to kind of create their own, uh, they wanted to kind of have access to the data and, and use that. Um, so you can actually, you gain access to that um, 
so if I show, if I, so this is what this is here, this JSON in the share dialog. It's got a JSON link. This is the actual data for your exhibit. So it's possible to kind of use this data uh, to you know, however you like, essentially. Um, so what I've got here is, a, is an example of that, where uh, I've, I've got the universal viewer set up um, completely outside of exhibit.so, you know, it's just completely new application where it's got the UV and it's pulling in this JSON data. And then when I click on this JSON data, it's doing exactly what exhibit.so does. It's dri driving the UV to those different points. So theoretically, you could make anything, anything you like with it. Um, and that's linked to in the, in the docs. Um, so right, so yeah, doing pretty well. Uh, as as they come from five past. Um, that's kind of a whistle stop tour of kind of all the features. I believe it's every single <laughs> feature. Um, but we've got a bit of time that uh, we had kind of half an hour earmarked um, for kind of uh, trying out exhibit and creating your own. Uh, we've got a link here to um, another workshop we did a, a while back called Remembering the Future. And this, this, is a, this is an exhibit where Sophie and I kind of scoured all various kind of online catalogs and found interesting manifests that we liked. And uh, yeah, in, in much the same way as St. Andrews do, you know, they, 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 they've, we've created a kind of a example manifest, example exhibit with a bunch of different manifests in it. And if you want to, you could try um, clicking on duplicate. So it's linked, it's linked, it's linked here. Um, you, know, you, you could open this exhibit, click on duplicate, and then remix it and kind of tell a tell a story of all the kind of uh, interesting images that we found. Um, and then we can kind of, if you, you know, you, if you want to ask me any questions uh, as you go, I was thinking uh, we could kind of screen share, you know, you could share your screen uh, with everyone and we could answer it that way, if that, if, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I, we've got a, it's five past now, so we've got a bit of time to kind of do all that. Um, does anyone have any kind of questions uh, they'd like me to address? Um, or is everyone happy to kind of try and create their own exhibits and see how that goes. Hey, Ed, I had a question that I put in the chat. Um, I was wondering, and apologies if I missed this, but is there a way to show, like annotate a single image, like with the points that you showed in that quiz feature, um, but like, show like have the user be able to kind of navigate between annotation points on an image rather than like through the arrows i, I don't know if i'm explaining that correctly but do you do you know what i mean right. uh so at the moment um the pinpoints work on 3d models so so the the the, the idea with the pinpoints was that um, it's pretty similar to how Sketchfab, uh, their, their annotation works. It's kind of a double click. You've got a point, and then you can you know, reference that. Um, that it's, it works the same way with images. So you can kind of click on the pinpoints tab, and then double click, and they look identical. So there's this kind of con continuity, I guess. Um, so. Uh, if I add a few a few pinpoints to this, um, and 
refresh that. So it's going to zoom to wherever I zoom to uh, and, and saved it. I, had, I hadn't clicked the tick button, so it's, it's using the previous one. But the, the pinpoints are going to be visible. And you could, you could ask a, a question and reference these, these numbers uh, as with the 3D model. But if you wanted to kind of, um, you know, you know you, if I go back to, to here and say, right, this, this is about this first pinpoint, and then add another and zoom to, Oh, I need to enable it. So that one. Uh, you don't actually have to put a comment in them. It's it's okay to leave, leave them empty. So I don't want to, on this one go to this pinpoint. You know, you could kind of string them together that way. One of the things with IIIF is you do kind of rely on the speed of the server <laughs> that you're downloading the IIIF from. So yeah, you can you know you can kind of string them together that that way. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but that that is that's using the the arrow buttons. Currently, there's no way to kind of. There yeah, you can't click on the point and have that be what updates the comment in the or the description in the top left i think i think right. that's more what um what feature i've heard our curators ask for like that ability you know rather than having guiding someone through in like a certain order like enabling the user to to just click on points randomly to see the different descriptions yeah um i think i think we have a project which is there's some grant being applied for at the moment which is similar to that which would use exhibit uh in in a similar way um yeah that's that's not currently an option but yeah to, to, so so clicking on on having an image and then using the annotations uh, to advance the story as opposed to the, the arrows. Um, exactly, yeah. And, it, and it, I guess it wouldn't necessarily need to be a point. It could be like a square or something that you like click on the square and it zooms in yeah. to that square or something. But, but the, yeah, that concept. Yeah, it would, be, it would be interesting to add other forms of annotation as well you know, kind of regions like rectangles and uh, things like that. We haven't, we haven't quite got that far yet. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, the kind of the minimum viable products, I guess, was pinpoint something. Uh, and then we're able to make that a kind of a continuous experience between 3D and images. So that they, they kind of look the same. Um, I guess as, as 3D annotation, you know, it, it advances, then maybe we'll be able to do, you know, a, a rectangle on an image and a kind of a, an area on the surface of, of 3D models as well, uh, which would also be nice. Uh, but yeah, all, all, all to be TBD to be developed. <laughs> Um, that, that's great. Yeah, thanks for thanks for um, yeah confirming that that wasn't an option. Is that something that I can submit as a, an enhancement request? Or are you accepting enhancement requests? Yeah, I mean, how we're kind of working at the moment. I, one thing I didn't mention actually. Um, so the Universal Viewer um, exhibit is kind of a what's like a child project of the Universal Viewer. Um, so the, the Universal Viewer has a kind of um, a steering group set up where we meet up every month and we have a, we have a, um, 
pattern of this open collective. So we have sponsors on, on open collective and that gives us kind of a monthly kind of or annual kind of budget for fixing bugs and adding new features to the universal viewer. So people that join the steering group, people that become a sponsor, get a seat at, in the steering group and then are able to help, you know, guide, steer how the project develops. Um, so that's proved quite a successful kind of approach for the universal viewer. We recently released version four, which is funded by a lot by the steering group. And uh, so when, when feature requests come in for the universal viewer, then we kind of, uh, we, we, I, add, I kind of add it to the agenda for the next call and we discuss it and uh, assign funds um, if we think it's a worthwhile kind of thing. Um, so far, I don't think we've said no to any anything that's coming. Um, so the Universal Exhibit is also kind of part of that kind of family, I guess. And uh, so far, we haven't used the kind of steering group to fund any, any extra features for Exhibit. Uh, what tends to happen is um, and what's happening at the moment is, is you know like like Bruges with their YouTube support you know they got in touch um, we're working with an observatory at the moment they 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 really wanted the deep linking um, and they you know both both clients kind of said right we've we're doing this funded project we've got a bit of budget for uh, you know online engagement could you add this feature for us and then we're like yeah sure you know um, we write an estimate for it and then deliver it. Um, so that, that, that's kind of how smallish, I guess YouTube isn't the small feature, it's quite, quite a big project in itself, but that's kind of how Exhibit is evolving at the moment. The kind of people are getting in touch with us and they're like, oh, can we just have this, this thing added? And then we develop it for them and add it. Um, but there's also the steering group model as well. So at some point, I imagine, you know, there'll be a bug uh, with exhibit, like the, like the text color one, there, uh, where it's like, Ed's going to need not, you know, a day or something to, to, to fix that. And then there's, the funds are available for that. So there's, there's a couple of routes to getting new features, requesting them and funding them. And through, um, thank you so much for explaining that. I will definitely reach out to my institution and see see what we can make happen <laughs> to support your work because it's it's really great um i will just say I'm, I'm at harvard and um i recommend your tool i'm i'm a digital collections librarian that i run our digital collection building service where we use spotlight and i always recommend this tool for, to our curators for helping enhance their um websites and they so far love it and we have a few examples of it on our sites but the, that was just a feature that um has come up a couple times so just yeah curious to know how we can um be a little bit more involved with that so i will I'll maybe follow up with you later yeah sure please do and uh we've got a if you haven't got my email address then we've got a contact form on the exhibit site as well uh, which people have been using to send in requests as well. Um, and I can reply to those. Uh, so yeah, there's various ways to get in touch. We've also got a, a Slack channel for the Universal Viewer, which I'm always on basically. So yeah, lots of ways to reach out. Um, so yeah, uh, any more questions? Oh, the Latin, Latin script languages. Have we got it? Let's find an example. I kind of want like Laura Mipsum, but in using uh, and let's just let's add that. Let's 
So yeah, it seems to be, if I'm understanding correctly, that, that seems to be okay. Um, yeah, as I said, you know, any kind of UTF-8 character will work in there. I think emojis will work in there. <laughs> Try that. A bear. There's some in the chat, uh, Ed, um, Chinese and Arabic script. Ah, yeah, yeah. There. So yeah, I think that seems okay. Um, the universal viewer actually. Uh, works with right to left kind of texts, uh, uh, books as well. Uh, so that's all kind of part of, it's kind of one of the advantages of having the Universal Viewer as a, uh, in this panel here, as opposed to kind of uh, more, you know, just open Sea Dragon or something, is that you can kind of, you know, you can page, page through it and uh, find, find the page you're interested in. It's like, it's, it's, it's better rather than working with an individual image, individual images, you're working with an actual tripmyth manifest. Um, so any other questions? And has anyone got a Exhibit they want to share, <laughs> or uh, has anyone got stuck on on anything they like help with? Uh, does exhibit support links out like a catalog record for an object? So. Maybe not understanding this correctly, but if I add a link there, to the catalog record from St. Andrews, and refresh it. So I've got a link there and click on that. It'll take me to the to the uh, catalog record. Um, I also mentioned that um, you know, because it's using the universal viewer, you know, that you've got the more info panel here. So it's also got record record URL. What whatever metadata is included in the Tripwire manifest is available here. So that you know, St. Andrews is quite you know, thorough with the information. Uh, and if there were, were an attribution on this manifest, then that would also be displayed, and that could have a, a link in it as well. Hope that helps answer that. Um, is anyone working on a exhibit they'd like to share? Cool. So that sounds like that's answered that question about the, the links. Yeah, we'll try to add these to our FAQ. Um, what else could I show you? I feel like we've kind of, uh, I feel like if we have no more questions, then um, 
I don't want to keep people, <laughs> you know, uh, if if because uh, we've got kind of a bit of time left, but um, you know, if if, if everyone if you feel like we've covered everything that's relevant to you, then you know it won't hurt my feelings if you <laughs> if you leave the call. Um, yeah, so I don't know features page, bit of a list of what can be done. We're actually working with Morphosource Source at the moment, um, so that they're, I don't know if you know Morphosource, Source, they're the bigger um, 3D repositories. Um, their, their catalog items will work, will do work already in, in Exhibit. Um, they're pretty excited about the quizzes. I think they want to use those with their students. Um, oh yeah, and sort of theming. Um, this site's fortunately no longer live, uh, but this is for the Brighton Festival um, last year. Uh, and you can't really see it there, but the, the font in the kind of embedded, this is a, kind of a, a website they created for the, for the exhibition and it had a very distinct kind of look and feel to it. And uh, we set up an instance of exhibit for them, and they they styled. Uh, we we updated the CSS on their custom install so that the fonts and colors are the same, so that it kind of fits in their kind of style of their website. So there's you know really there's no limit to that. Uh, if you've got your own instance, then you, know, you can kind of customize that um, however you like. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a link here to the Slack if you want to join us, EV Slack, by the way, in the footer. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, um, user accounts are that's something I'll be working on soon. Um, and we're thinking to make those available to people who set up their own instances. Um, so yeah, you'd, you'd have a profile page uh, and you better see all the exhibits you've created. Uh, currently, you know, it's a case of um, using your bookmarks, essentially. This is what I do. I just have an exhibit folder with all my favorites in it. Um, but yeah, that doesn't really scale. Um, so yeah, hopefully um, the user accounts will make, a lot, make it a lot easier to work with. We've got a bunch of examples here. If you find any good examples, by the way, that you really like, please send them and we can add them to the showcase. All right, so uh, I guess, ah, I tried the quiz option, it's very straightforward, okay. So I guess I'll, uh, in lieu of any further questions, I, I can kind of um, stay on the channel, stay on the call. I'll just maybe just mute myself. And uh, if anyone wants to kind of demo their exhibit or um, ask me anything, I'll keep an eye on the chat. And uh, yeah, so I'll be here for the next half an hour. Thanks everyone. Thanks for all the nice messages. Really appreciate it, everyone coming along.
I'm back. Uh, so there's a good question here about um, 3D models in IIIF. I'd love to hear about any best practices if we want to use them in exhibit, especially relative model size and face counts. So really my partner Sophie is the expert in that. Um, she just kind of got kind of methods for optimizing things in, in, in Blender, which is kind of an open source 3D modeling tool. Um, but what we tend to do is use uh, the GLB format. Um, so that's part of the GLTF specification. So GLCF is kind of like the, um, it's aiming to be the kind of job, the, the JPEG of 3D. Um, I think they're doing a, a good job of that. Um, obviously there are other alternatives out there, but you know, GLCF, it, it works very well with, uh, with, with model viewer, um, which is a project by Google. Which is the, the tool, this is the viewer that um, Universal Viewer uses to display 3D. So if it works in model viewer, it'll work in exhibit. Um, this is one of the Smithsonian's models. The model viewer is uh, designed for the GLTF format. So GLTF, GLTF is, uh, you can see Neil Armstrong got GLB. Um, Oh, okay, already using one of your perfect. So uh, everything that you're using in one of your will definitely work. Um, GLB is is a good shout uh, because it's kind of it wraps everything up in a kind of a binary sort of it's a kind of a compressed version of the GLTF file, which is kind of a text file, but it also wraps up all the kind of assets like the textures and things like that into one single file, so kind of easy to work with. Um, so we aim for less than 10 megabytes. That's our kind of rule of thumb uh, in order for things to kind of load in a kind of a snappy-ish kind of way. Um, so yeah, uh, that can be tough um, if you're working with really complicated objects. Um, there are tools out there for compressing uh, so to sort of make this easier, really, it's kind of an artwork. It's kind of a um, an art to, to to compress these models to reduce them down. Um, but there are kind of automated tools out there that can do a pretty good job of it. Um, I'm trying to I can never remember what it's called. It <laughs> came up on the, so the triple life. Slack has a 3D channel and where we talk about things like this. And uh, there was something shared on that a while back. Um, what was it called? I might be able to remember. never remember what it's called. Uh, Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll try. If it, if it comes to me, I'll put it in the notes. Um, but yeah, there uh, is it like 3D or something. Uh, it's kind of a drag and drop tool online. You drag your model onto it and get a compressed version back. Yeah, if it if it comes to me, I'll add it to the notes. Yeah, um, other than that, you need someone who's kind of an expert with something like Blender and they can go in and a lot of the time, the file size is actually the textures on the 3D model. So the, the, the images that are kind of applied to the mesh um, those can be a, a source of a lot of size in the image uh, in, the, in the 3D model. 
Um, in terms of publishing 3D manifests, so Morphosource, uh, the only, I say, uh, well, Morphosource and Raw Pavilion, my client in Brighton, uh, they, they're the only two people doing triple F 3D right now. Um, so publishing your own content in that format is a, can be could be a bit of a challenge. Um, although I did uh, some of the examples I showed you today, like with the Amphora, I generated those myself. So I've got a tool called Biff, which stands for Build Triple IF. Um, this is a kind of a like, I use this a fair bit when I'm when I just need a quick way to get some triple IF hosted somewhere for free, like on, on GitHub, then I just use this. So I'll put it in the in the notes. Um, am I still sharing my screen? No, I'm not. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, Biff, Biff, Biff template. Um, so, yeah, if I put that in the notes. What this does is, it's kind of uh, a way of, you know, you can, you can use the file system, it's like static site generation, essentially. So you can use the file system and add, add your GLB to a folder, put a YAML file in there with some basic kind of metadata. And then you, you run this BIF on it and that will generate all the triple F for you. So triple F is a kind of derivative of a very simple file structure. Um, this is kind of my uh, my idea that essentially triple F it can be boiled down to quite simple stuff ultimately. Um, so I've, I've created a couple of video tutorials for that. So how to how to create tiled images with Biff template and how to use how to download objects from Sketchfab and, and use them. Um, and then you literally you just go to this GitHub repository choose for cell or netlify um, click deploy and give it a, a name and it will duplicate the repository to your own github account and set up a website to point to the the data that's uh, published there, so it's all kind of automated. And uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's some YouTube videos that show it in more in more Important. depth. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Now the new director at the land. He's English. No, he's not English. Creator there. I'm hearing some conversation, but I don't know if it's directed at me. I don't think so. Um, well, that's the last time. So yeah, it's simply a case of adding folders, um, dropping images and 3D models in there, oh. a bit of metadata, and then- Yeah, um, I should tell Larry that she should apply. So you can then go to your dashboard, visit it, and there's your trip IF. So I, I use this quite a lot. Um, you can do videos, 3D models, images. Uh, uh, of course, it's free because it's hosted on GitHub. It's 
it's kind of great if, if, if you're doing like a small project where you don't need to you've only got a few things you a few 3d models few images etc and you don't need a, a big kind of infrastructure behind it it's quite a, a quick win just to do, to do it that way and then you don't also you don't need to worry about um, ongoing maintenance or anything like that it's just static files posted on github there's no way it'll ever go down that probably outlast every other kind of catalog system out there <laughs> maybe maybe not. I hope that helped answer that. Oh, I've enabled live transcription. That was turned off. But yeah, this is being recorded, so we've got to reference it. Anyone got any other questions? One thing uh, we want to add at some point is um, sort of unbelievably, uh, Google Model Viewer doesn't support panning out of the box. You can't kind of, you can only rotate and zoom. You can't kind of right click and pan. Uh, so at some point, we'd really like to add that. Um, I think recently they've added an example of how to do that, but it's kind of like not a core feature of model viewer. But that would be super helpful for storytelling purposes. I guess the other thing I could mention, you know, we've I showed you YouTube and Triple F support, um, but you know that we don't need to stop there necessarily so one, one thing about the universal viewer is it's kind of it's not necessarily wedded to triple if um it's a, it originated as a kind of pre triple if project where the welcome library where the, you know the welcome library wanted to be able to have a single viewer continuous user experience for different types of files and then the british library adopted it and wanted to use triple if um, but you know over time it's become increasingly obvious that things like pdfs loading via a, a triple if manifest aren't such a great idea um, it's kind of hampering adoption actually to some extent um, where people you know like corporate clients and things they want to use the universal viewer to view a pdf but they don't necessarily understand what triple if is or why that adds any value to viewing a pdf so um at some point it'd be very nice to kind of add a add more tabs to this so you know a pdf tab where you basically just give it a pdf to look at and uh, without the, the the need for a triple f manifest and um you know i think there's all kinds of ways we could extend extend this um, for all types of different content, integrate with different platforms, etc. Um, I, 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 you know, I was talking about other types of annotation earlier. Perhaps if the UV, um, you know, we could add those to the UV, or perhaps there's other triple IF viewers we could incorporate. You know, the UV is is increasingly a kind of a, an integration layer. Um, where it's, it kind of gives you a nice way to integrate all sorts of different viewers with platforms like Exhibit or Morphosource or you know whatever platform you, you, you know. It's kind of I, I see that as the future of the project. Really, it's it's, 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 it's evolutionary kind of trajectory. <clears throat>
All right, so unless there are any other questions, I think I might, I might end the call here. Um, we're down to three, three people. Does anyone, would anyone like to ask anything else or demo uh, their exhibit? Cool. Okay. I'll uh, I guess I'll, I'll call it a day there. Um, thanks. Thanks everyone. Um, hopefully, see you soon uh, on the various triple F calls and conferences and etc. Bye bye. Bye.